so so you made a very valid point uh, the ev industry and the battery industry they are one of the most growing sector in the country and globally if you if you see uh, so uh, just putting some numbers for example in the last uh, last year itself or uh, there were more than 1 million evs added in a span of 9 months which is like a global record kind of a thing and a uh, similar the trend has continued for a long time it is going to be continuing in the future so our economic survey predicts that almost uh, the, the ev sector is going to be growing at a rate of 49% cagr so uh, that means that the market has huge potential and uh, this is just i'm talking about evs if we see batteries they are a different segment altogether and they cater to different applications in different sectors again and the battery market is also growing at a very huge pace uh but one important trend that i want to point out here is about advanced chemistry, chemistry cells so we know that lithium ion lead acid batteries they are the present and the upcoming future but if we see the longer trend we are going to see a lot more new battery chemistries coming up which will fuel the growth of evs and other sectors like stationary storage power plants and there is a huge push by government to bring the advanced battery chemistries to to the country so uh, you know uh, there is a very uh, important scheme that was announced by the government it is called the pli scheme for advanced chemistry storage so they have pledged around 180 billion for developing new chemistries such as sodium ion calcium ion lithium air lithium sulfur solid state batteries so uh, since we are not the biggest producer of lithium then uh, we have to look towards alternative sources of energy also right so uh, these new chemistries that i am talking about they source a uh, very cheap raw material and that's how the cost of battery production will come down and to meet the huge demand the battery production capacity has to increase a lot mm. so meeting the demand uh, f- uh, and uh, providing the production capacity is the biggest challenge for the time being but yes the sector is one of the biggest growing sector right now yes that's uh, that's a very uh, very well uh, uh, you know very well question uh, but the thing is that competition is going to be the catalyst for innovation so without competition we cannot thrive it will uh, uh, the growth will be pushed by innovation and competition but uh, in this scenario what i would like to uh, disagree a little bit our competition is not ola and uber even though they are also the biggest players here but we have our own space in the startup domain and what we are doing uh, as a, a, a startup in the domain of batteries and battery energy management system our competition is big giants obviously ola uber but even other global giants who have strong presence in india for example uh, tata uh, uh, sorry texas instruments st microelectronics nxp these are very uh, big companies that provide battery management solutions apart from that there are many startups who provide a lot of uh, value addition in the battery segment so uh, the market uh, or the scenario is very diverse and there is space for lot of innovation in this sector so even though we are competitors to them but we are also you know a complementary uh, complementary solution to their solutions so there is space of growth for both our solutions and other innovations in the battery management sector and uh, what what the scenario can be that it will be a symbiotic relationship where both of the bigger giants and the startups can grow to to uh, to drive the growth in the sector there are 
two parts of the question. So first, I will address this part. Uh, uh, when you say the uh, sustainability, uh, how we integrate sustainability? So uh, basically, what I would say is sustainability is actually the mantra or the driving force behind our innovation. And sustainability in different aspects. For example, you see batteries, there is a lot of uh, potential for bringing sustainability right into the supply chain. But the most important factor is how do we uh, go for the second life usage of battery and how to reduce the e-waste and then how to improve the life of the battery so that we can reduce this e-waste and we can extend the life of the battery, we can cut down cost. So uh, the motivation behind our uh, startup or behind our work is sustainability itself. And we want to bring, uh, or, or we are striving throughout to bring sustainability into all our practices. So uh, one biggest challenge for us is that we are developing an AI-powered battery management system. And we see that AI is very energy consuming. And that is again a motivation for us to bring sustainability in the AI solution itself. So what we're doing is we're developing AI-based hardware, which can actually reduce the energy consumption, power consumption very much. And it can uh, fuel the growth of AI-based solutions. So many people do softwares uh, based on AI solutions. But the underlying hardware becomes very energy consuming. So that's how we are bringing the concept of sustainability in the product, in the process. And as we go into production and manufacturing and uh, uh, doing customer orders, then we also will integrate these practices into our entire supply chain. But at this stage, we have integrated sustainability right from our motivation to the design aspect, to the end product, which is our AI-based hardware. Yes, so, uh, you know, semiconductor and electronics form the heart and brain any kind of applications. So in the battery management sector itself, the electronic plays a very crucial role, which is also very hard to crack. It is uh, relatively easier to develop software-based solutions, value addition, but hardware forms a very big challenge. And therein comes the power of leveraging AI with semiconductor industry to solve this challenge. Now, why this AI-based system on chip solution can help is that we want to you know make our system or the idea is to make the system sustainable over a long period of time so for that we have to also foresee the future what is going to be the future trend what are the new technologies coming up in the future and the hardware that we develop now should also be relevant for that new challenges coming up so, for example, in the context of batteries, I have already mentioned how new batteries chemi chemistries are coming up. So, our idea is that, you know, the hardware should not become obsolete, redundant, uh, not usable for newer chemistries or for new applications. If another, uh, if a new startup comes with another AI solution and they want a hardware who could support those AI solutions, then our chip can provide those solutions. So, that is how AI-based system on chip is the trend right now and going to be in the future as well with uh, digital design powered by uh, or complemented by mixed signal system on chip design. These are the trends which will actually support not just the battery management system, but also any other kind of AI applications where the startups or where the industry struggles to find the right hardware to develop these technologies. So, uh, as as a fabulous uh, uh, VLSI industry ourselves, we have faced these uh, challenges, 
it it is a very uh, you know um, uh, very demanding field which has a lot of requirements uh, and unfortunately uh, we are not too blessed at this point of time to have those uh, ecosystem in place in india but fortunately for us the government has come up with a very interesting and very useful scheme for us which is the pli uh, sorry which is a design link intensive uh, incentive scheme for semiconductors so even we have taken the advantage of that uh, scheme and what they are doing right now is they provide all the design infrastructure support and they also give us financial incentives to develop these ips to uh, develop them develop the ips develop the systems develop the processes in the country itself for which we are too much reliant on imports and then uh, after we as fabulous design companies after we develop our ips how do we manufacture them it is again a big challenge and that also uh, is being addressed by the scheme where the push is towards bringing fab companies in india right now we don't have those companies we have scn but we want a very sophisticated nodes where we can develop uh, where we can develop products which can compete globally now at this stage how we navigate is we uh, you know leverage uh, or uh, we have been blessed with support from big global giants for example arm they are the biggest ip providers uh, uh, in terms of semiconductor and nxp who are very big in automotive and battery sector so they have supported us with ips now these are global companies but the uh, the support that we receive uh, and uh, the right kind of connect that we get a startup is very important globally it is available we and we go through the uh, we go through you know the global route of euro practice to get this design manufactured we are hoping that these uh technologies these services come to come to us in india also so that we can leverage them so i think we need to have a you know a, a synergy with global and the national sector to bring this semiconductor technology the entire supply chain in india right now we have the support but we also have to look for global support as fabulous companies but hopefully in the very very near future we are going to get all of these in the country itself Thank you.